Hello, me again. It's been a while since I did a video, but here I am. I was uh, moved to do a video because I had an exchange with someone on one of my favorite Facebook groups about retirement, and this person made a comment how you should not use Monte Carlo or not rely on Monte Carlo in doing any sort of retirement planning because anything less than 100 isn't acceptable, basically, what was, was the uh, insinuation that, that was made from the comment, saying that and he, he uh, used the analogy of if I'm about to get on a plane and the pilot says there's only an 80% chance we're going to make it to your destination, are you going to get on that plane? I know I wouldn't personally, but that's a real goofy, off base, straw man sort of comparison and argument to try to make, very fundamentally different than having a Monte Carlo result of 80%. So, what is Monte Carlo? Let's start with that. Monte Carlo was named after the town, Monte Carlo in, in Europe, it, it named after the gambling town, so that's another sort of ding the person made, was that that should tell you all you need to know. Monte Carlo, by definition, means gambling. Um, again, off base, yes, it was named after the town Monte Carlo. It stops there. So what it is, is it's a statistical modeling tool where it tries to do some uh, ultimately educated guessing about how your investable portfolio might perform going forward based on using past data of how it actually performed. So it looks at your various investments as they are today, looks at what their returns have been over the past typically 30 years of data it uses. It looks at how volatile those returns have been, meaning how, how much of those returns whipped around year to year. And it also looks at the I'll say linkage, but technically I think it's covariance or, or how the different assets have um, interacted. How, how, you know, has, has one gone up, one gone down by how much? It looks at the linkage, the interconnectivity between the two, or between the various assets and how they move relative to one another. So using that, it tries to make some statistically relevant guesses and projections about how your portfolio may perform going forward. It'll run typically a thousand different scenarios or trials where one scenario may be lots of really good years to start off, then a few bad years, then some more good years, and whatever. And then the other extreme will be multiple bad years to start off, followed by some good years. And, and a thousand different of these scenarios where at the end of each thousand, it'll plot out an anticipated, projected, possible ending portfolio value for you. And if that portfolio is anything zero or less, that is deemed a failure because it implies you ran out of investable money prior to whatever time length you're looking at. Typically, let's assume you're 65, you're, you're planning for a 30 year retirement, living till 95, you would run this Monte Carlo scenario using a 30 year period where you're trying to find out what's the statistical likelihood of my portfolio depleting prior to that 30 years ending, meaning before you die. So if you get a result of let's say 90% Monte Carlo, that means uh, in 90% of those trials, you ended up with something greater than zero in terms of your portfolio value. Whether it was $1 or $10 million, doesn't matter. The point is you did not end up with zero or less. But the other 10% of the time does mean that in 10% of those thousand different trials and scenarios that it ran, you would have depleted your portfolio prior to, to reaching you know, your 30 year period or, or, or 95 in this case. So that's what it means on the surface. There's a lot more that goes into it. It's not purely just how's your portfolio performed. You have to also model in the anticipated withdrawals or distributions you plan on taking out of your portfolio. So right there, there's going to be a lot of assumptions that go into that. In addition to the assumptions that the past returns, volatilities, and correlations of your portfolio will, will uh, potentially repeat themselves going forward, that we know is flawed because as you all know, uh, past performance is no guarantee of future results but it's kind of the best thing we got, you know, next to a crystal ball that works, which no one has, using the, the, the past as sort of a, a starting point to piggyback off of is really um, better than taking a, a random stab in the dark. So it's better than nothing. So in addition to the portfolio returns, the other big assumptions that go into Monte Carlo, like I said, are how much money you're going to be taking out every year. So you literally need to know, or at least um, come up with estimates of, your annual withdrawals every year for the rest of your life. Think about how hard that's going to be. You know, you may know exactly what you spend today at 65, but you don't know what you're going to be spending in 95. If for no other reason, then you have to take into account inflation. And nobody knows what inflation is going to be. Historically, it's been quite low, about 2.5% per year on average over the last 30 years. Currently, it's really high, 8 or 9%, you know, highest in about four decades. It will come back down at some point. No reason to think it won't, but who knows how long it's going to take and, uh, you know, how, how slow that journey back down is going to be to some sort of historical average. But the point is, um, it's hard enough to predict what your expenses are going to be next year and two years later, let alone 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Nonetheless, you have to because you need that baked into this Monte Carlo so you can make estimates of how much you need to take out of your portfolio every year 
because that will impact how much your portfolio uh, goes down or goes up over time in addition to the the returns that are getting assumed for that portfolio. So in addition to having to estimate your expenses for decades, you also need to estimate your other sources of income, like Social Security, for example. All else equal, the higher your Social Security will be year by year, the less you'll need to take out of your portfolio every year. So in this Monte Carlo process, you're also having to come up with assumptions for what's my Social Security income going to be every year. If you're already on Social Security, you, you know now exactly what it is. That's easy. But what's it going to be in 10 years, 20 years? That comes back to you having to know what inflation is going to be over the, every year for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And you don't. Maybe it'll be high, which means your Social Security payments go up. Maybe it'll be low, which means they won't go up a lot or anything in between. So the, the point is that this Monte Carlo thing uh, very flawed in that it's not the end-all be-all. It's simply just an educated guess. It's using statistical uh, analysis tools with the best set of assumptions and guesses and past data we, we currently have as of now, this point in time, and your actual portfolio now, this point in time, and trying to do assumptions. What's the chances of it depleting before you hit 30 years or again, whatever time period you're looking at? It will be wrong. As, as life happens, as things unfold, as the markets do what they do, as inflation does what it do, as you, you have your own uh, life scenarios of spending more, spending less, dying early, dying, dying you know, beyond your, your assumed life expectancy, all those things will change your ultimate path in this Monte Carlo way, uh, Monte Carlo projection. Just because today you're projecting out 30 years and it says you only have an 80% chance of not depleting your portfolio before you die, that doesn't mean there's a one in five chance that you will die broke. It's not that simple. Whereas if a pilot tells you there's only 80% chance we get to your uh, destination alive, that does mean there's a one in five chance you don't, that you die. In that case, the outcome is only A, you get to your, your uh, you know, destination to live, or B, you die and you don't. There's no in between. There's also no way for you to uh, adapt or change or help improve those percentages along the way. You're not the pilot, you're just sitting in the plane, right? Uh, what if you were to have some ability to control as, as, these, as life is playing out? What if you had the ability to control and increase the odds of, of getting to your destination such that even though it was only 80% chance you do initially, you can tweak it along the way and make it better as things come up. Uh, one example would be like if you were the pilot, you get on a plane and let's say, I'm just making this up, but there's an 80% chance that the predetermined flight path that's programmed into the plane's computer, planes fly by themselves most of the way other than takeoff and landing. Well, let's assume there's an 80% chance that the pre-planned flight, pla flight path, flight plan uh, goes, goes off without a hitch. That 20% chance, let's say is, um, I don't know, let's say the flight plan was wrong, programmed incorrectly, and the flight plan currently has the plane flying right to the top of a mountain. That would be bad, obviously, right? But if you're the pilot, you're flying, you see this happening, you know, you, you see the plane going towards the top of the mountain, you're gonna pull up, you're gonna take it off autopilot, you will do corrective action to go up and over that mountain, hence avoid the, uh, the what would otherwise be, you know, the, the plane in no uncertain terms heading into that mountain. So you can control that if you're the pilot. If you're not the pilot, you can't control it. One extreme example is like playing Russian roulette, you know, with a gun that has, uh, has a six chamber, uh, has six chambers. If there's a bullet in one of those chambers, there is a 17% chance, roughly, I'm rounding up, a 17% chance that when you pull the trigger, you're going to get the chamber with the bullet. That means there's approximately 83% chance that you're gonna get one of the five empty chambers with no bullet. There, there's no way to control that outcome. It, it's simply, it's pure, pure statistics, right? A one in six chance a bullet comes out, five and six chance it doesn't. I'm not taking those odds. If someone were to tell me, here's a loaded, you know, uh, uh, six shooter gun with one bullet in it, 17% 17, 17 chance a bullet comes out, 83% chance it doesn't. I'm never, ever touching that game, right? As I assume you wouldn't either. That's very, very different than a retirement planning projection where the Monte Carlo says 83% chance of success, 17% chance of depleting your assets. Very different. Here's why. Go back to that pilot scenario. If you're a pilot, you see something bad happening to your plan, you're going to change it. You're going to take corrective action. You as a retiree, you have at least some ability, some, some control to some extent, to alter your plan along the way. For example, you run the Monte Carlo today for 30 years, it shows 83% chance of success. That's fairly good actually, believe it or not. It doesn't need to be 100. That just means another way to look at it is there's a 17% chance you'll, you'll need to uh, amend your plan along the way. It's not 17% chance you die broke. 
it's 17% chance of needing to update or change or adapt your plan over time. So let's say you're in retirement, five years in, the markets have been horrendously bad, worse than historically, uh, worse than they've been historically. You can, you can make some adjustments. Uh, you can perhaps spend a little less, right? If you assume you're gonna spend 100 grand a year every year, you can maybe spend a little, cut it down to 95, if you have the discretion. Now some people you know, can't spend less than a certain floor because you need to live and you know, be out of complete destitution. But generally speaking, people have some ability to alter their expenses a little bit. So if and when things get really bad, you could probably spend a little less and vice versa. If things do really, really well, you probably should spend a little more, right? Because you have the ability to. So that's why you could adapt, you can adjust along the way. It's not this binary, it's only gonna be A, it's only gonna be B, there's no other scenario in between. That is definitely not the case. With Monte Carlo, you can adapt, change, be flexible along, uh, along the way, and the results will change every year. You should use Monte Carlo not as a once and done snapshot, every year adapt it, you know, adjust it as your actual expenses change year to year, rerun it. As the actual market returns, volatilities change year to year, rerun it. As you have changes in your assumed longevity, you know, if a medical condition pops up and, and cuts short your lifespan, rerun Monte Carlo. It's this flexible, dynamic, ongoing analysis tool, not like the binary, um, only one or two outcome type thing, like a Russian roulette game, very different. Another big thing to keep in mind with Monte Carlo, is that it only looking at your investable portfolio depleting. Even if and when your investable portfolio depletes, you will still have your guaranteed sources of income running. For example, if you have social security, that will still be coming in. If you have a pension, that will still be coming in. If you purchase an annuity and are getting income from that, that will still be coming in. So Monte Carlo is just the chances of depleting your investable portfolio. At one extreme, and there are folks out there like this, what if you have healthy social security and pension, for example, that more than cover all of your expenses throughout your life, that there are people like this, in which case your investable portfolio, you really don't need per se, other than big expenses or one-off things, or you wanna to gift to people, but, but let's assume that there's no particular legacy plans, they don't want to leave this money to anyone or anything, their goal is to try to spend it down before they pass. In that case, you'd actually want to see a Monte Carlo that's as low as possible. You, you, you want them to try to deplete this portfolio during life, right? Because again, they'd still have pension, social security, and or annuities. So keep that in mind as well. Um, it, it, you have to look at what's your goal with this money. Do you want or need it to last as long as you do? Or are you trying to get rid of it, trying to enjoy it in life? In which case you want a low Monte Carlo score. Then, and then it's good. A low score is good, not bad in that case. Another thing it doesn't include is uh, home equity. A lot of people have a lot of equity tied up in their house. Monte Carlo, again, because it looks only at your investable portfolio, doesn't account for the fact that you may have hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity in your house that you can unlock, either by selling, you know, downsize the house, buy a smaller house, or something like reverse mortgage. Again, lots of levers, lots of options, lots of ways to change the path along the way with Monte Carlo. Very different than getting on a plane with only one or two outcomes or playing Russian roulette with only one or two outcomes. So with that said, it's uh, disingenuous and, and misleading for someone to say, if a pilot says you only have an 80% chance of landing, are you gonna get in that plane? And try to use that argument to say, if your Monte Carlo only shows 80%, are you gonna actually do that plan? It's just very different. Someone who says that argument is doing it from, from one of two angles. He or she has something to sell you, and they're playing off your, your fear and uncertainty, or he or she doesn't fully understand Monte Carlo and how it's meant to be used, what its limitations are, and how it's not the same scenario as getting on this plane where the pilot says there's an 80% chance of, of uh, getting there alive, 20% chance of not. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise because he or she clearly is trying to mislead you or doesn't understand what they're talking about. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care.